What is up amigos? Today we are talking about the lift coefficient. So we're gonna go through what is the lift coefficient, then how do we calculate it, and some examples. So first of all, what is the lift coefficient? Well, to answer that, we first need to talk about lift. So lift is a force. So we measure in newtons, or if you use any other units like pounds, force, for example, but let's stick with newtons. So let's say we have an object here, and we have a free stream flow coming in, U infinity, and we have this object producing some sort of force. Now, there is a force going up, and there's a force going back. There is also gravity pulling this thing down, so there's G. This force here is lift, and depending on how much force is being produced, it could overcome the weight of the object, or maybe not. So this lift is very important because this allows us to get off the ground. So the question is, if we have two objects, one which is this long, but then we have another one exactly the same shape, but now it's much bigger, and this is producing even more lift because it's bigger, which one is better? Which one is more efficient? If you say that this one is because it's producing more lift, that's not necessarily the case, and that's where the lift coefficient comes into it. So the lift coefficient is a non-dimensional number which allows us to compare different objects to see which one is effectively producing more lift based on its geometry instead of just how big it is or the velocity or any other parameter. So the lift coefficient comes from this equation. So lift equals half rho v squared s c l. So we'll go through each one of these terms individually. We have the lift here, which we've mentioned here is the force uh, pushing up away from the ground. We have the density, rho, so the density of air, or it could be the water or whatever. Uh, if we have air, we have airfoils. If we have water, it's hydrofoils and so on. We have V or U, that's the free stream velocity. We have S, which is the reference length, or the reference area, sorry. So in tip, and usually um, it is the plane area. So if we look at this from the top, any of these objects, we might have it looking like this. So the reference area, S, is now this area here, whatever that is. It could be, let's say, one meter squared. Finally, we have the lift coefficient. So to get the lift coefficient, we just rearrange this equation to go lift coefficient equals the lift divided by half rho v squared S. So just as a side note, this term here, so half rho v squared is the dynamic pressure. And we use it a lot. If you looked at our uh, drag coefficient video, you would have seen that there as well. So after we know what the lift is of any object, let's say we have an object that looks like, I don't know, like this. And we have a certain lift. Let's say it's 50 Newtons. We can put in 50 Newtons here. So we want to find the lift coefficient, 50 Newtons, divided by half. Let's say it's 1.2, but it's probably going to be different because the density of air does change uh, quite a lot throughout the day, times by the velocity. So let's say the velocity is one meter squared, just to make it easy. So one meter times so one meter is one, and then times the reference area, let's say it's one as well. So this comes out to be 50 divided by 0 0.6. So we can say that's the lift coefficient there. So that's a very high lift coefficient. Uh, it shouldn't be that high. Usually they are much lower than that, but who knows, maybe this, this shape was really good. Maybe we're just geniuses. So anyway, that's how we, that's what this question is. That's how we calculate it from this equation here. Let's talk about some examples and some real life situations. So let's come back to this original case here. I'll draw it again. And let's say we have now this airfoil and it is pitched, let's say at uh, five degrees to the free stream flow. So, Typically an airfoil like this, at this angle of attack, we're going to be having a lift coefficient of about 0.5. It depends on the airfoil, but that's a general ballpark figure. Now, let's say we put the airfoil up even higher to, sorry, I butchered that airfoil, but we can use our imaginations. And let's just exaggerate this and let's say it's 10 degrees. It's obviously more than that, but I'm just drawing it so we can see. Now the lift coefficient is now 1.0, which is again, a fairly, standard ballpark figure. So we know now that this object, the lift that it can produce is not only based on the geometry, but also how the geometry is oriented based on the free stream flow. So we can say now, if we have this airfoil at 10 degrees, we have a twice the lift coefficient 
as five degrees. And why is this useful? Because if we have an object, let's say a whatever object, and we want to make this fly, we want to put these wings on there. So these airfoils, we'll put them here. And we say, okay, this ball, um, it has a weight, like a, a, has a 50 Newton weight pulling down. So for this to fly, at least, we need to have the lift that's being produced by this entire object, including the airfoils, to be equal to or greater than 50 Newtons. So that's what lift needs to be. So if we have the lift coefficient equals 0 0.3 for this entire object, we can then calculate, so we go 50 Newtons, it has to equal half times 1.2 times the velocity, we're not sure what the velocity is, squared, times the area, let's say 0 0.1, times the uh, lift coefficient. We can now rearrange this equation to figure out what velocity we need to travel at to produce enough lift to overcome its uh, weight and maintain level flight. And if we want to go uh, up, so we want to increase the altitude, obviously the lift needs to be more than the gravity, the, the weight pulling it down. So we can then say, okay, we need to have a velocity greater than this value. So that's what the lift coefficient is and some examples. Let's go through it again. Just a recap. So what is the lift coefficient? The first point is referring to the lift. So the lift is the force that opposes gravity. So it goes up. And the lift coefficient is a way of non-dimensionalizing the, uh, the goodness of the shape at producing lift. So if we have a high lift coefficient, it means that this shape is better at producing lift than a low coefficient. And this allows us to, to compare all different objects from an airfoil or hydrofoil to a, a weird shape like this, to a cube, to whatever. And the we calculate it through this equation here, half times the density times the velocity squared times the reference area times the lift coefficient equals the lift. So we can rearrange this equation to get any of the terms. As long as we know all of them except one, we can calculate the other one. And some examples, in real life, airfoils are very easy objects to produce lift. Most objects don't really produce very um, nice lift. They might produce um, a little bit of lift or lift in a fluctuating manner, but airfoils are very nice. They produce steady lift. And we can calculate what the lift coefficient is quite easily. And we can compare different airfoils at different angles of attack, different flow conditions, etc. And then we can calculate how much uh, airfoil we need, the area of it, the velocity of it, the speed, whatever, to uh, overcome the gravity or weight to maintain level flight or increase the altitude. So that's in this video. Hope you liked it. If you want to look at uh, fundamentals even more, like you're looking for a textbook or whatever to study fundamentals of aerodynamics even more, I recommend the textbook called Fundamentals of Aerodynamics by John D. Anderson. It's actually a textbook that I used back in my uni days, although I had an earlier edition. You can find the link in the description. And make sure to like and subscribe this because it um, helps our channel and helps you stay informed with what we're doing and learning more stuff. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace out, amigos.